learned it. And then we see the same language tonight in the first phrase that we find in verse uh, 5. Uh, As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill uh, your ministry. Uh, so there is a drift that Timothy is facing. There is a pressure for Timothy to conform. And Paul tells Timothy to resist this, to fight against it, to wage war against it. Remember in chapter 2, he told him to remember Jesus Christ. In chapter 1, he told him to remember his ordination vows. In numerous places, he tells Timothy to remember the Apostle Paul himself. I'm not a big trout fisherman, but I've been trout fishing a time or two. And usually when you go trout fishing, you go to a cold stream that's, that's fast flowing. And when you stand in a trout stream, if you're just kind of standing up right, you run the risk of being knocked over with the current. And when you're standing in a trout stream, you have to plant one foot downstream and kind of lean into the current, and there's this constant pressure that you're leaning against. And at the end of the day, the muscles that you haven't used in years are going to be pretty, uh, pretty worn out. That's kind of the imagery here, I believe, that's helpful, is Paul is telling Timothy to, to, to stand against the current. Uh, don't get caught up in the current of the world that will take you downstream and destroy you. Lean against it. In spite of those that are turning from the gospel, Timothy, you need to be sober-minded. You need to endure suffering. And even in the midst of the suffering, spread the gospel, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. So the passage, the verse, breaks down very easily for us tonight uh, with four commands that the Apostle Paul gives to Timothy. Notice the first one. Uh, be sober-minded or be serious-minded. Uh, the Greek word here means to be sober and figurative, figuratively to be free from every form of mental and spiritual drunkenness and so to be well balanced and to be self-controlled. <coughs> uh, one commentator by the name of Fairbairn, F-A-I-R-B-A-I-R-N, that's a <coughs> name last name, isn't it? Uh, he has said that the word means to be vigilant, wakeful, <coughs> considerate frame of mind, taking good heed to what is proceeding around and to pursue its course with calm and steady aim. So the minister, the Christian, sometimes we find ourselves in, in, in a storm. We find ourselves in difficult circumstances. And the call and being so reminded is not to panic and not to give in, but to be calm and to be steady and to face the foe. Uh, John Stott, in the commentary that we've encouraged you to read, says, When men and women get intoxicated with heady heresies and sparkling novelties, ministers must keep calm and they must keep sane. Uh, one of the greatest of the Civil War generals was a man by the name of Thomas Jackson. And he received a nickname at the first Battle of Bull Run in July 1861. He closed the gap in the Confederate line against vicious Union attack. And someone in the distance saw him and said, There is General Jackson standing like a stone wall. Stone wall Jackson. And the name stuck, and he's forever remembered uh, by that name. Well, this is the image, I believe, behind this word to be to be sober-minded for the Christian and for the Christian minister. Folks, we are in the midst of a war. We are in the midst of difficulty if we take the Christian faith seriously in the day in which we live. And we are to stand against it. And he says, Timothy, you're in a war. It's no time for clowning around. Be serious-minded. Be sober in your duties. Clowns and comedians should not occupy pulpits. So be sober-minded. Notice the second thing that he tells him to do, endure suffering. This, this is really almost laughable when you consider it as far as what the Apostle Paul was facing and what we have to face for the Christian faith. Folks, none of us have suffered. Now, some of us may have suffered emotionally and, and, and maybe we face difficulty in churches, difficulty in our lives for our Christian faith. But, I mean, here is the Apostle Paul in chains writing from prison and he's calling upon us, and he's calling upon Timothy to <coughs> suffer for the Christian faith. There's very little suffering that we have to do 
in modern day America. But nonetheless, we've seen in 2 Timothy that this is a theme that recurs over and over again. Chapter 1 and verse 8. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord nor of me his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Uh, chapter 2 and verse 3, share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. I mean, here is Paul in prison getting ready to be executed, and he tells Timothy, Timothy, if you face the same thing, endure it. Don't run from it. It is this call to courage uh, that he is giving to Timothy. Uh, chapter 2, verses 8 through 13. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, is preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect. You wonder how the doctrine of election can have a practical effect in the life of a minister. Well, here it is. Uh, if we really believe that there is a group of people that God has set His affection upon and He's going to use us to reach them and we're going to be God's tools, God's instruments to reach them, then we will endure everything, Paul says, so that they might come to salvation. That they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, the saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with Him, we will also live with Him. If we, are in, if we endure, we will also reign with Him. But if we deny Him, the common belief in Christianity today, if we deny the Lord Jesus Christ, we're okay. But Paul says, no. True saving faith will produce perseverance unto the end. If we deny the Lord Jesus Christ, He will deny us. If we are faithless, He will remain faithful. <coughs> That's the Christian life can be brutal. It can be hard if we take it seriously. Now, if we don't take it seriously, and Christianity is just you know one other religion among the many religions out there, um, we probably won't have too much difficulty in life. But if we take these things seriously, if we believe the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation, if we are faithful in witnessing for Him, difficulties will come our way and possible suffering. And Paul says to Timothy, and he says to us, endure suffering. He is saying, Timothy, temper your expectations in this life for comfort and for ease. Jettison your dreams for the Ephesian dream or for us for the American dream. Some ministers seal their testimony with their blood. I think of the famous hymn, and it asks us some questions. <coughs> the questions go like this. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own His cause or blush to speak His name? <coughs> Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas? Are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stem the flood? There's the whole idea of the current. Must I not stem? Must I not stand against the flood of evil and corruption? Is this vile world a friend of grace to help me on to God? Sure, I must fight. If I would reign, increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by thy word. So Paul tells Timothy to be serious, to be sober-minded, and he tells him to endure the suffering that is sure to come his way. Notice the third thing that Paul tells Timothy to do. Chapter 4 and verse 5. Number 1, serious-mindedness. Number 2, Endurance and suffering. <coughs> Number three, do the work of the evangelist. Now initially this command doesn't surprise us. After all, this is the Apostle Paul, the church planner, the, the hero of the book of Acts who took the gospel to the early Mediterranean world. It comes as no surprise that Paul would command Timothy to evangelize. 
But let us think about this issue of evangelism a little bit more deeply and a little bit more seriously. For one, think how much we struggle with the whole issue of evangelism when life is going well. I mean, how difficult it is for us to talk to people about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ when we're not even suffering. I mean, evangelism can be a difficult thing for us to do. When life is good, we're healthy, money in the bank, kids doing well, we still refuse to cross Rico Tyson's pain line. But think about how much we would struggle with evangelism in the midst of suffering. What usually happens to us when we suffer? We focus on our pain. We're focused on ourselves. We're focused on whether we're going to make it through the illness, make it through the difficulty. But here is a man in prison about to have his head separated from his body, and he's giving this young minister counsel <coughs> on how to survive in a difficult day. And the third thing on his list is, Timothy, you do the work of the evangelist. Share your faith in the midst of your suffering. A number of years ago, I was in the hospital in South Texas with kidney stones. And let me tell you, my focus was on myself and it was on my pain, uh, big time. And I got a phone call from a friend and you know what he told me to do? He said, Doug, be a good witness down there. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to do was to be a good witness in those circumstances. Do you see kind of what I'm talking about here? The amazing nature of this man called the Apostle Paul. He's about to lose his life. He knows it's going to happen because he says in verse 6, the time of my departure has come. And yet instead of moaning, instead of complaining, uh, instead of being focused upon his own <coughs> needs, he's focused on others. He's concerned about the gospel. He's in a dank, dark, dingy, dirty, despicable Roman prison. But he's thinking about the cause of Christ he is thinking about getting this gospel into the lives of other people. He is commissioning Timothy to carry on and do the work of an evangelist. So he's saying, Timothy, as you possibly suffer, don't turn inward. Do the work of an evangelist. Focus upon others. And I think the one person that is the shining example in our day and time, I've mentioned her time and time again, is Johnny Erickson Tata in our day. A young woman, or she's an older woman now, but from her young years <coughs> and adolescence, the suffering that she has gone through, but the shining witness that she has been for the Lord Jesus Christ for so many decades now. So Timothy, be serious. As you face this apostasy, uh, face the suffering that may come your way and then do the work of an evangelist. Don't stop sharing the gospel just because you are in the midst of pain. And then the final thing he says to him, fulfill your ministry. In other words, Timothy, complete it. Don't give up. As I said earlier, one cannot say I have kept the faith until he has finished the race. And the call here to Timothy is to be faithful to the end, be faithful until you see the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, these are very, very easy words to utter. They are very, very difficult words to fulfill. Very, very easy words to utter. Very, very difficult words to fulfill. I was listening to an older preacher when I was a very young preacher and just getting into the ministry, and I heard him make a comment, and boy, it stuck when I heard it. And he said this, and I think he was in his 60s or 70s by the time by the, when, when I heard him say it. He said that he had noticed over the years that few ministers who begin well end well. Well, that made me think. And I, and, I, and I said before the Lord, Lord, it would be only your grace that would help me to face such a difficult calling. Few ministers who begin well end well. And I believe this is why Martin Luther said, we're not the right man on our side. Our striving would be losing. If the Lord Jesus Christ was not here beside us to sustain us, to strengthen us for the war, to strengthen us for the battle, 
to keep us going, our striving would be losing. I found a book. Um, where did we find, how did we find this book? You remember? A packer on finishing our course of joy. I just found it on Amazon. Okay. Uh, Lynn was on Amazon the other day and found this book by J.I. Packer. J.I. Packer is in his early 90s now. And, um, you know, he's written the, the classic work, Knowing God. We studied it here several years ago. Tremendous theologian in the 20th century. Well, he's written this little book. I mean, look at that. You can read it probably in, in an hour. It's not uh, hard to work through. But let me tell you, he gives you some, some, uh, some thoughts to ponder. <coughs> the title of the book is Finishing Our Course with Joy. Not just finishing our course, but as the Apostle Paul said, finishing our course with joy. Finishing our life on this earth well with faithfulness to Christ. And he says, guidance from God for engaging with our aging. And on the back it says this. And we, we have to chuckle a little bit at this, but it, it, it's, it's certainly a very serious thing. Uh, thinning hair, failing eyesight, and arthritic hands reveal an inescapable truth. We're only getting older. But he goes on to say, but that doesn't mean we should simply sit back and take it easy. And finishing our course with joy, renowned theologian and author J.I. Packer challenges us to embrace old age as an opportunity for continued learning, careful planning, and heartfelt discipleship. Packer's pastoral words and personal stories encourage us to press on toward the upward call of God with endurance and grace that we might continue to glorify God in our aging and finish our lives with joy. And we see Paul doing that here, don't we? He's at the end. He's about to die. And yet his focus is on this young colleague encouraging him to faithfulness. And we're going to get in uh, in the next uh, couple of times, and we're going to look at verses 6 and 7 in June, and then verse 8 in, in July, where, where Paul has this, this vision towards the future of seeing the Lord Jesus Christ, of receiving the crown of righteousness. This is a man that is facing the end with, with joy, and with great hope. Now maybe some of you are sitting out there tonight and you're saying to yourself, um, yeah, but, but Doug, this is just a passage of Scripture addressed to preachers and to ministers. And you're kind of saying to yourself, I'm, I'm off the hook on this one, you know. I don't have to be as serious about these things as, as Pastor Barcroft has to be. Well, those of you that have a little book commentary by 2 Timothy, and you read it, Stott makes a case that this passage is not just for ministers, it's for who? Everybody. Every single Christian that would name the name of Christ. Christian, preach the Word. Be ready. In season, out of season. When you have to, reprove, re re rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and stand against the apostasy of our age, those that turn away from the Christian faith. And Christian, always be sober-minded. Endure suffering if it comes your way. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry, your purpose in being placed here on this earth. Let's just all finish our course, not just finish it but finish it with great joy. Let's pray. Lord, this is such a stirring passage that we read from the very lips of the Apostle Paul. A man that not only put out the teaching, but a man whose life embodied what he called upon others to do. Father, we know that he was only able to do this because your grace was working in him mightily that He was working out His salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that it was You that was working in Him, both the will and the do to Your good pleasure. But Lord, we thank You for setting such examples for us in the pages of Scripture so that we might shoot for them 
and that we might uh, be strengthened in our own resolve. And Lord, we know that these things we do, we will do them very imperfectly. We will never reach perfection in this life. Uh, but oh, Father, what a name, what a goal, what a perspective as we get in the, in the latter years of life to, as J.I. Packer says, finish our course with joy, to be serious-minded about the Christian faith, that when suffering comes, to endure it patiently, to endure it trusting in you, to deal with the pains and aches and problems that come our way. Oh, God, help us when that's the case with us. And then, Father, in the midst of such things, to, to do the work of the evangelist, to remember even when we got kidney stones that we're to be good witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ and to fulfill our ministry, to live for the well done, to be able to say, I have fought the good fight, that I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith, <coughs> And that now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me, and not only to me, but to all those that have longed for his appearing. Lord, help us to see that the truths of this passage, the blessings promised, are for every Christian sitting here in this room. And may we indeed pursue our course with joy. We pray these things in our Savior's name. Amen.